What is going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to use the panner node in the Unreal Engine. So if we look at uh, what I've got so far, um, I've got two examples. The first, first example is I've got like an effect going on a wall to make it sort of look like water's coming down it. So like it's raining and water's coming down the cobblestone wall. Um, this was just a really quick um, example. I didn't put a lot of time into it, but it was just to sort of show what you can do with the panner node. And if I go on to the main thing, you guess it there. If I go onto the main document, you'll see I've also used it for my chevrons. And if you saw my last video, I basically used this as um like on my racing track and I just had them going around it. And it gave it quite a nice effect. And having them moving just looks a lot nicer than them being stationary. And if I click on them and if I move that up, you'll see it's a completely different segment. So you can just hook them up side by side and it makes it look like um, they're sort of flowing through each other just using the panner node so if I actually go into the material quick I'll show you it's very simple all you do is connect your panner node up so if I disconnect that and make that like that it's completely still if I connect that up so that's animating so I'm going to create a new material and show you how to do that completely from scratch so if we come over here and I have a plane in my document I always use so if I write plane and you don't have to use a plane um, I just imported a .obj or .fbx, can't remember what it was, from um, Maya and I just use a plane because a plane is much easier than using like um, a box because I don't think in UE4 you can import a plane, I might be incorrect with that but I don't see anywhere where there's a plane they're all solid shapes, so I'll just use a plane because a plane could be transparent so let's make this material so if we, um, let me get rid of that plane if I go to my panner example and I make a new material, now we're just going to call this um, arrows test, so that it's a different name. We'll load that up. And first things first, let's just connect that. We're going to put in our arrows in there. So you've got to do is dragging your material. Um, I already have alphas made for this, so I can literally, if I just make a multiply there quick, if I hook it up, it will. But it's that one. It will cut out uh, my. Um, the alphas have already got it cut out before so I'm not actually just going to use this I'm going to use where it's cut out in my alphas in the image so if I um, put that to opacity mask and if you want to know how to do alphas I have a video already up about alphas so you can always go back and check how to do um, effective alphas so if we click on our material and not that one we go into here and we click mask here you go you get that up and it's really cut it out now and now all we've got to do is color it and we're just gonna get up some basic colors let's make this one pink mm, it's quite a nice pink connect up to my base color and I'll color it in and then connect to get another multiply connect that up to there connect that up to my missive and let's just turn this up until you like the glow Oh, that's quite a nice glow like a retro there we go and if I that's just the alphas now so that's not animated yet so if I hook that in and I rotate that you see they're just stationary arrows they don't do anything not like the green ones so to do this as you saw from the green ones all you got to do is hold P and left click or you can type it in either way connect that up to my like whatever texture sample you have so if you've got like one for your base color one for your roughness one for your normal map and one for your alphas whatever you connect up to all of them but I've only got one so just connect that up click your panner node and then type a number in whatever direction you want it to travel so I think it's X and put it in so let's go 0 0.2 that's going backwards so to fix that just put a minus at the start and done and you can fiddle with both of them, so if you put 5 in that one, it's going to go look, up, which we don't want, but I'm just showing an example. And yep, that's pretty much done. If we click tick and go into our actual engine, we will have an animated chevron. And if you just copy that across, so that was just Control c Control v and align it perfectly. Yeah, it's alright. You'll have just animated chevrons that look like they're flowing. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped anyone. This is just a quick story that I wanted to throw out there because I'm sort of running out of ideas of what I want to do in my materials. I might do one on tessellation. If you do want a tutorial, whether it be on materials, on Photoshop, on Maya, 
on anything, even Unreal Engine stuff, it doesn't have to be the texture inside, leave it in the comments and I will make a video of it or I will reply to the comment and tell you the answer there. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed and bye bye.